Well, once again, we're off to the races with preliminary auction clearance rates being spruiked to high heaven over the weekend. As I discussed recently, these numbers are misleading because they rely on reported results which are biased towards successful outcomes while avoiding the gap between listed and reported results. Take Domain, for example. In Sydney this last weekend, while 719 properties were listed, only 481 were reported, with 365 sold. That created a clearance rate of 75.9%. In Melbourne, 616 were listed, but only 449 were reported, and 311 sold. That created a clearance rate of 69.3%, which, by the way, was lower than their 72.1% last week. Or, according to the AFR, home buyers shrugged off the Reserve Bank's decision to hold interest rates steady, with auction clearance rates holding firm as buyers try to get in amid early signs of renewed price growth in capital cities. They cite preliminary figures from data firm Cotality, showing a national auction clearance rate of 72.9%, just below the 73.1% recorded a week earlier, and not far from the year-to-date high of 74.5% achieved four weeks ago. The clearance rate has remained above 70% for five consecutive weeks. They failed to talk about the absolute volumes, of course, and that is the bit of the data that is really missing completely. Melbourne, they say, remains the country's busiest auction market, despite the school holidays with 630 homes taken to auction, down from 767 a week earlier, but broadly in line with the 628 held during the same week last year. The city's preliminary clearance rate fell to 70.5%, which of course is different from domains. And these statistics that are rattled out each week are totally and completely misleading. They tell you nothing at all. In fact, worse than that, they are deceiving. So, as I said at the top of the show, my concern is that many people are going to make bad decisions based on the gaslighting that we're getting from social media, from all of the property spruikers who write in the papers. And as I keep reminding everybody, remember that most of these newspapers have very strong links directly with the property sector. So you need to ask the question, how objective are they really at all? The bottom line is this. If you are thinking about getting into the property market, it is worth doing your homework, looking at the local data and getting very familiar with the granularity there. Don't be caught out by these high level stories which are just deceiving people. And what it means quite often is that people end up buying property that they subsequently regret buying 